The Gulf Coast Growth Show is sponsored by Chevron Pasadena Refinery and is an extension of the Economic Alliance Houston Port Region, where our mission is to market and grow a vibrant regional economy. All right. Hey, guys, and welcome back to the Gulf Coast Growth Show. I'm your host, Jason Lee, and I am joined today by Scott Moosebacker. Uh, the most appropriately named last name ever for a guy from Canada. And we're glad to have you today, Scott. Um, I'm excited to hear from you. Just reading up on your resume, uh, I was just thinking, I can't wait to get home and talk about this podcast with my wife. She's in oil and gas, and she works with uh, engineers and geologists all day. And she just talks about what uh, great guys you are. And we just had a huge event out here, uh, NAPE. Uh, and I got to spend some time with a lot of guys in your space uh, a few weeks ago. Salt of the earth, some of the best guys on the planet. So we're excited to chat with you today. Scott leads uh, uh, really a team with Vista Projects Limited. Is that correct? You bet. All right. And they are a, uh, well, really, they're starting to become international, but originally Canada based. And now they're a technology firm that is launching into the Houston region. And so we're excited to talk about it. And, and really, our, our scope and what we're trying to cover is system integration. And uh, before the show, we were talking about this for our audience. What you what system integration really means is you look at these plants behind me in this picture. For those that are on video, or those of you who are driven by the refineries, every one of those pieces of equipment, every one of those things, when they do turnarounds, cleanliness, maintenance, if you can imagine the thousands upon thousands of pieces that are out there, how they were formulated, put together, the science and the engineering behind it, all that. And we were to go back fifty years ago. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even probably, whenever someone wanted to get information on that, they had to go into this, probably these giant, I can imagine warehouses of just data. And then you'd have to go get as much data as you could pull together to try to then figure out what the answer is. If you're trying to work on something, get a solution, get to the solving the problem. I would imagine just the turnarounds in, in and of themselves of taking these refineries and taking them you know, from good to great uh, which they have to do on a regular basis was probably a massively inundated process, right, Scott? So what we're going to do is share about how these guys are really changing the game and integrating systems so that they can all communicate and then get data like that. So we're going to talk specifically about digital engineering today. And we're going to uh, talk specifically about digital twinning, right, which is not to be mistaken for what's happening on the screen with Scott and my jackets looking so close yes while we might be twinning <laughs> not the type of digital twinning we're talking about so scott thank you for joining us um why don't you kick things off give us a little bit about your background and tell us a little bit about the uh, vista projects and their you know the organization you're with sounds good thanks for having me i'm super excited to be here so uh vista is almost 38 years old we've been primarily focused on the energy markets for for many of those years uh, we're based out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada, but as you mentioned, we are having uh, a lot of success and we're growing down into the Houston market. We've got a couple really exciting projects down there, both in energy as well as in petrochemicals, and it's, uh, it's going really well. So my background is actually a process engineer. I've been with Vista for almost 17 years now, so I'm a process engineer for 10 years. Uh, got tired of that and started doing project management for a few years. And then I got tasked with taking over our systems integration crew, which is like you said, Jason is working on bringing all this information together from multiple different spots to allow people to readily access it when you're doing turnarounds or design or anything like that. So it's, it's a, uh, it's super exciting. It, it's a fun environment to be in because we are pushing the limits of what we've done in the past. And it's really been We've really, I think, pioneered it, especially in our neck of the woods, and we're trying to bring that down to Houston as well. Our, we really started this adventure down in, in, in 2013, 2014, where we said, look, there's a lot of engineering companies out there. A lot of them are doing the same thing. And, and it was these really engineering projects that when you finished with them, you would, you would line up your brinks up to the back of your, to the back of your uh, engineering office. You'd toss a ton of paper in there, and then they'd drive over to your client, your operator, and dump them all in the back of their warehouse. And it would be not lost, but it's, as you can imagine, Jason, it's really hard to find that information, right? Right. And so what we said is when we were undergoing this, we said, we want to do things differently. We want to differentiate ourselves and we want to ultimately come up with a much better product for our clients. And so that's where, like you said, working in digital environments and digital engineering and, and creating digital twins is really what we've become amazing at from my perspective over the last 10 years here. 
Fantastic. So let's break those things down individually so our audience can start to understand kind of where we've come from and where we're going with this type of technology. So um, for the layman, right, for the guy that's interviewing right now and isn't in engineering every day, but, uh, you know, again, our, our audience is comprised of all different types of individuals. There's going to be people who know exactly what we're saying, but then there's those people that are intrigued by it, just like I am with how does this work and how does it, you know, how, how do they make the uh, sausage for lack of a better term back there? So tell me, yeah. um, tell me, starting with engineering, talk to me about what that is. Dig, digital, we know what engineering is, but talk to me about what digital engineering sure. is. Yeah, so digital engineering is we're still doing the engineering work. We're just doing it in a different environment. So historically, the way that engineering was done was it was either done on paper or it was done in Excel files and they were all done in autonomous fashion. So so for example, let's come back to one of the towers you see in your background there. For a tower, you might have a data sheet, which is a bunch of information about that particular tower. You might have information from the vendor that sold you that tower that has the metallurgy and a bunch of information there. You'd have you'd probably have a 3D model that showed what that would look like once it's constructed in digital space. And then you'd have tons and tons of drawings that essentially said, okay, this is what the overall tower looks like. This is what the internals look like. This is what the piping around it looks like. And so ultimately when you're all said and done with the engineering process, you've got potentially hundreds of documents just around that one tower. And when you go to do a turnaround on something, if you need to find you know, a specific, all of them or a specific subset of that information, and it's come over to you in a Brinks truck, it's very difficult to put your hands on it. Gosh, and yeah. so what we do is kind of flip that on our head. And what we do is we work within digital environments and within essentially within databases to record that information. And so ultimately, when you are trying to go find out information about that particular tower, you can go to simply a website, which is like a digital twin, and be able to access all the information about that tower, whether it's, you know, some of the details around how tall is it? How big is it? Straight through to what does it look like on the inside? Show me, you know, a 3D model. What are the entire insides of this look like? Is it trays? Is it packed beds? All that kind of information. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you have it all in one spot. And so when we're doing the engineering, we're not doing it in Excel files. We're doing it in databases. And when we do it in databases, it allows us to really easily query and find and reference back to those databases to bring that information out together. And that's what we've become really good at. It's not just the engineering, but also being able to readily identify what that looks like. Wow. So uh, just thinking about from times of the past to times of today, I can, I can only imagine how much uh, labor and how much energy this is going to save and then translate to savings, which in turn translates to more productivity for everybody. Um, I mean, I can imagine even from a safety perspective, how much more improvement in safety this would do uh, if you are ensuring that the data is accurate, it's accessible, and that there's really no stone left unturned. Um, have you guys been able to, like, do you have any metrics or anything that you use to justify that says, hey, this is from the past to where we are today when it comes to efficiency, safety, things of that nature? Tell me more about that. Yeah, so what we can talk to a lot is, especially going to turnarounds or changes within your facility, we would typically spend, and between ourselves and our clients, between 20 and 30% of our overall project time on some of these smaller projects, trying to find the right information that we need to change or modify, as well as validate that it's the latest information. So that's wow. coming back to the safety side of things. Like you might, for that particular tower, you might have had five, 10 revisions of that tower over the course of the 10 years that it's existed because it might have been changed or tweaked or modified. And the last thing you want is when you get a welder in there or whatever to do their changes, they get in there and it looks totally different than what the drawing shows you. And so oh, wow, yeah. when we think about if we're able to virtually eliminate that 20, 30% of gathering the documents and validating that it's the correct information, right off the bat, it leads to cost savings. It leads to you know, confidence that what the work that we're going to do is exactly the work that we intend to do. And again, that comes back to safety, especially on some of these really high tech plants where you're potentially got welders way up in the air. We want them to know exactly what they're getting into, make those changes and get out. And that's how we send everyone home safely at night. 
I love it. That's a, that's great news and uh, great for our industry. We continue to uh, see uh, really advances not only in the technical, you know, it's um, it's not just about bottom lines. It's about people, and that's one thing that I've learned about this industry is that they care about their people. And so I think people are looking for ways to not only enhance the ability of uh, coming in and driving profit, but they're also enhancing the ability of saving people and keeping them in, in the best environment possible that they can get home to their families. Something, you know, I can, I can specifically speak to our region here in Texas and here in the, across the Gulf Coast that we have some of the best safety uh, in the world. So exciting to know that your, your tools and resources are making an impact there. Talk to me about 20. What is uh what when when we talk about twinning, what does that mean in the industry? So what what that means is it comes back to well, digital twins can mean a lot of different things to different people. What we feel that a true digital twin is is it's ultimately bringing together information like this power that we're talking about from all the different sources that it might exist in. So it's not just bits and pieces. It's not just a three D model of this tower. It is a holistic view of it. So that when You've got people out at site and they've got a, you know, an iPad or some sort of portable tablet. They're able to go to the digital twin and pull up any bit of information that they might need to know about it for that tower. And that can pertain not just to the engineering and design information, but it also could pertain to the operational history of that particular tower. It could come back to what other maintenance has happened over the last three, six, nine months on this tower so that we can, again, have a holistic view of this tower, not just today and not just yesterday, but over its entire life cycle. And that's really what we feel to be of most value as you transition from the kind of the engineering and design phase into the operational phase. And that's really what we are trying to do is, is bridge that gap. A lot of times in engineering and design, people do their work and the, their end objective is to have a mechanically complete facility. And we all know that, you know, that's great, but this thing has to work now for the next 20, 30, 70 years, right? Right. And so when we are taking this approach of digital twin through the engineering and design phase with the focus on setting something up for operations and maintenance to be able to use on a daily basis for the life cycle of the facility, I feel like we're really focusing on, on what, the long-term needs of this facility and the people that are going to be working within it need to do this work. Fantastic. So um, now that we've talked about what, what it is and how it works and, and really kind of, and, and you've even supported it with some data on, on how uh, from a safety perspective, cost perspective, how it's improving. Um, talk to me about, um, you know, what the, the next, I don't know, the next, now that First of all, how long have you guys been specified, like specifically tapping into this space, this region, this are like not necessarily this region, but this environment to create it? Yeah. Who are your end users? Are they the refineries? Are they the actual construction companies that are actually doing the work in the refineries? Like when you guys are, are deciding to penetrate into this market share, who yeah. in the market are you trying to talk to? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we are, there's two different distinct kind of areas where we look at. The first is through our engineering design process. So Vista Projects has been doing this style of engineering work ourselves for nearly a decade now, but we've also been branching out to help other engineering and design companies uh, set up these tools for execution on their own projects. So that's one area that we've been focused on. The second is for our clients. One really nice thing about setting up the digital twin throughout the engineering design phase is it allows them to very readily have access to all the information they need about the actual process. So they can get key performance indicators on, are we on schedule? Are we on budget? Are we going to meet the quality demands that we've set out for our engineering and design companies? And so really it comes back to helping that end user and end client have a better feel through the engineering and design phase. So they've got the confidence that their budgets and all that kind of stuff are right. The second big chunk is, you know, going in, and this is where we're starting to really cut into something new. Historically, a lot of the work that we were doing has been around new greenfield facilities. The exciting part now is with um, some of the work that we're doing ourselves and with some of our partners is taking these brownfield facilities that 
have existed on paper, don't have 3D models, don't have all this information about them that you would expect for us to develop over the course of an engineering project today, but essentially digitize all that information to the level that it meets the needs going forward for that for that particular project. So it might be taking old, you know, PDFs that have been scanned 15 times. We've got folks that can essentially convert those drawings into a digital environment that they can be natively changed, as well as doing laser scans and essentially developing 3D models of these brownfield facilities. So you actually know what you're getting. And this is really beneficial for not just the operating company, but we've seen a lot of mergers and acquisitions over the last little while. Sometimes this is really beneficial if you're going to put your digital asset up for sale or as an end user who's looking to do a bunch of acquisitions, there better understand what you're getting when you're procuring these, these potentially mega facilities or even small facilities. I can't even imagine, right? Like, so if I was uh, in the past, if I was trying to buy a mega facility or even buy a you know, $100 million company and I'm asking for a due diligence process on the history of the equipment, the safety of the equipment, all of those things, it, just envisioning them pulling up in the Brinks truck and up unloading, you know, I mean, think about the, just the manpower alone to audit the assets themselves to see if the value in and of itself is what it, it claims to be. So to yeah. digitize that process, um, you know, we talk about how important it is to create and bring capital into our region, right? So yeah. the Economic Alliance's mission, its focus, its goal, its drip, you know, we are at our core, our job is to bring revenue, capital projects, and, and, and infrastructure to Houston, Texas, right here in this corner, and to create jobs for our community. And so... If you think about that, if by bringing organizations like you who've said, hey, we're going to create a footprint there, if if that was to get and, and fast forward another 10 years, everything here is digital, right? Let's fast forward. Now we're, now everybody's op and dig, uh, operating digitally, and I'm thinking about buying assets or moving into a particular area, and I got a choice between um, some place in the Netherlands or whatever, right? And I pull up and I call them. I say, hey, what do you guys have? How can I get in there? What can I? And they, they say, fantastic. We're going to. If you come over, we've got an entire truck full of documents and things. You're welcome to bring your entire team and audit it. And here we can like, we'll just send you an email, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a link to a web page with all the information that you might you want to log need. in, almost like a data, so the, like a web page, almost like a storage house or storage, digital storage facility, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Exactly. It, yeah. It's, it's, and it's such a differentiator for the folks that we've been doing it with, uh, for those, for that long-term, you know, viability of this project. Sounds huge. It sounds like game changing stuff and it sounds exciting. Talk to me about why Houston. So you guys are, uh, you know, you've had a footprint in Canada for 30 plus years. Um, I, I heard uh, that you guys are, you know, <laughs> looking out towards the Middle East. Sorry, here in Houston, we got pollen like crazy this week. I don't know if y'all have to deal with that in Canada, but it is a is a nightmare down here. Everybody's driving Too snowy around. still. <laughs> Yellow cars, man. Oh yeah, I'll say it's probably like snowing right, right now. So totally. you're probably actually jealous that I'm coughing. Then I don't know. You might like the snow, but uh, <laughs> uh, so Houston, Texas, tell me about, you know, the organization and why Houston, why y'all, why y'all expanding here? Talk to me about that. Yeah. So, I mean, just, we've been down there a few times. We're executing a few projects down there already, but it's just the vibrancy, the energy. It, it's, it's really an amazing place with a lot of innovators. And I think we see ourselves really jiving well with, I mean, with what's going on in Houston, people are actively looking for how can we take the next step? How can we, you know, create additional value from the projects that we've got going on? And there's there's just a lot of excitement with what's going on down there. So we recognize that we looked across a lot of other areas across Canada and the United States, and there was just it was unparalleled, to be honest, with with mm. what's with what's going on down there. And to be honest. Alberta, there's there's a lot of similarities between Alberta and Texas. Like it's uh, coming from a very energy rich area of the world. Uh, Houston is no different. Uh, it's it's we feel like we know a little bit more than we might if we were going to somewhere else in the world. And uh, there's also that comfort level, which is which is great. And I think we also see that with us already speaking that energy language, there's lots that we can lend our expertise to help out uh, along the way. There's lots to learn from you guys as well, but uh, uh, we're, we're certainly excited about it. Awesome. Yeah. You forgot to mention Tex-Mex. 
So, Tex Mex, of course. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm just going to tell you right now, whatever kind of Mexican food you're getting in Canada is not the same. Not so, even close. Not, not even, even close. close. Not even close. You got to get down and get the Tex Mex. Um, well, I'll tell you what, as uh, you, you, it's been some great insight. Uh, I feel like uh, our audience is, is really getting a grasp in, uh, of, of what you guys do and, and the critical nature of it, but also the forward looking projection of where we're headed, right? Um, and I mean, it feels like it's almost just crack, cracking the surface, right? Like technology makes sense when you're building a new one, but how to then go retroactively and take technology and then enhance what's already out there, make it safer, make it more efficient and make pro projects on a go forward basis that much more profitable. People need to understand profits translates to, to jobs. Profits translates to people. Profits translates to growth. Growth translates to more growth, more jobs, more people, and so forth and so on. So when you can create an environment that does that, you're really making change. And it sounds like you guys are making change. Oh yeah. We're super excited for it. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. So anything else we need to capture for the audience before we get off? Feel like I think that's it. I mean, I mean, it's uh, it's such a exciting environment. People, what I'm really excited about folks down in Houston is they're really open to these kind of technological advancements. And uh, I would encourage people to just keep their eyes open and we're happy to come chat and tell people more. Fantastic. So again, for our audience, uh, uh, Vista Projects Limited, uh, they're based out of Canada, new offices opening here in Houston, very excited right in our region. Um, Scott Moosebacker, uh, longtime uh, engineer and ge geo scientists. So uh, is that correct? Engineer, sorry, engineer. Engineers. Okay, guy. I'm sorry. You're you're. I'm sorry. You're you're an engineer and member of the geo scientists of Alberta. 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 So you an engineer. So longtime uh, successful in engineer, 17 years experience, phenomenal value add. Um, as I mentioned before the show, we got to get you out uh, to a couple of my other peers who are in the same space because this is information that needs to be heard. For our audience, uh, we always want to encourage you and remind you that the Economic Alliance is committed uh, to really create a mission of bringing uh, revenue, jobs, opportunities, and infrastructure into our city, into our region. We've got a beautiful port that's designed to get stuff in and out of here, bring it in, and then really help our economic uh, or econ economy grow. Uh, and guys like Scott do a great job of bringing in and being value add. So our footprint now, right? We've got people all the way from Canada, all the way from the Middle East, uh, all the way from uh, England, and they all want to be here in Houston. And that tells you the value add of what we are and what we do and why we do it. So uh, thankful to have you, Scott. I hope that you'll make a trip out here when you do. Uh, Tex-Mex is on me, right? We're, we'll be happy to have you. I got some spots I'll show you around and we'll have a good time. Uh, and I'll have to introduce you to my wife. She loves engineers and geologists, people who can talk to us all day long. So she'll be she'll get a kick out of it. She's going to love this episode. So to our audience, please communicate to me. If you ever want to hear more, you want to, you have any questions, you can reach out to me via LinkedIn. Go to the Houston Port Region website. Please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you tell our story. Help us spread the good news of what's happening in our region. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to go to the Economic Alliance Houston Port Region website and subscribe to our channels. And let's pay it forward by sharing the good news of what's happening in our region by passing this episode to somebody you know.